So McLaren dropped some new software updates for Android and iOS. They also hinted at something very special coming up soon. Lots and lots of Castle 1412 talk. Continued discussion about the influx of new people into the hobby and all the creative ideas that people have. And I was on a little live stream show last night. All that and more coming up on the Fast on Facebook show. I am Chad. This is the Dorky and 40 RC channel. And let's get fast on Facebook today. Let's go. So yes, that is me rapping with a few of the guys on the MMF Make My Fun RC channel last night. It was a very, very great time. It went on a long time, three hours. We talked about everything from no prep to 3D printers, just to all kinds of hobby stuff is very enjoyable. Really enjoyed speaking with those guys. They're an up and coming little channel, both in Canada, all that fun stuff. I'll put a link to the video and their channel down below in the description. If you guys want to click on it and take a listen and see everything we talked about, highly encourage it. Give those guys a subscribe as well. They've got some other cool stuff on there. They're pretty much into everything uh, since uh, Travis does own an actual hobby shop. So. Now, McLean, you know, I love him, I hate him, and everything else like that, feel bad for him and all kinds of stuff. They've released a software version out. They've added a few things, and they've changed a few things. And one thing that we are seeing is that they are having to actually pull some things away. And the whole reason behind this is, you know, these older ESCs now, and yes, the DRK is an older ESC. You got to think it's using at least two or three year old chip technology built into it, if not older now, probably an F4, F7 processor. They're actually running out of flash memory on the DRK. So they're actually having to pull some stuff out as the code gets larger and larger. Uh, I think this time they pulled out the amount of profiles that you can actually put into the ESC. And this is something that we are probably going to see and get used to guys. Um, it's either going to be that or the $350 to $400 ESC soon, just because the silicone manufacturers over in China are really just like gathering up as many of these older rolls of, of uh, processors that they can find and they're bidding them out to the highest bidder. I've listened to a lot of different FPV podcasts where the people are like living in Hong Kong and doing business and all this kind of stuff. The things that they talk about are insane. And we spoke about that on the show last night as well. But uh, this is a prime example of things that we're going to look into. You know, I have uh, hats off to McLean for making a simple sacrifice to like incorporate new features and kind of take out some stuff that we don't use because, you know, until they are able to get something like H7 processors, for example, which are being manufactured and in bigger amounts, but carry a lot heavier of a price tag. It's a lot easier for you and I to stomach the purchase of say a newer ESC that has a newer processor in it that is capable of doing things and is not stripped down versus having to buy something that they overpaid for old technology and they're just trying to make it work. So it's a bad time for, you know, NPRC and all that kind of stuff, you know, in a perfect world, you, you would think that we'd be able to walk into any hobby shop right now in 2019 and buy an R1 or anything like that, but we are just not in that world right now. Uh, you know, they're making concessions. I see that they even uh, raised their replacement price. I think they've even seen, I think I've seen the APV even uh, raised their replacement price from 150 to 180 just due to the shortage. You know, that's kind of a shame, but like they've got to pay for these things too. And, you know, it's just, it's unfortunate the time that we live in, but the software update is cool. The other thing, of course, is that they're hinting at this big, massive software update here, which, Wow, when you just look at all of the parameters that could possibly be added here, when we're talking about different uh, PWM values for like throttle strength and brake strength and everything like that, you know, acceleration, boost timing, turbo timing, all that kind of stuff. Now, I think a lot of this has to do with their older ESC. Don't really know how much faith to put into this. And it looks like Colin kind of jumped in and tried to squash some of those rumors and everything. 
that, you know, this would not just be a redo of their 32 bit software that they had that was a few years ago, that they would keep on evolving the actual DRK platform, which is what we love, right? That's what we want. Um, I can't wait to get the actual DR10 running, you know, that has the DRK built into it just so I can kind of play around with this stuff. It's the reason why I like to have two cars. Um, you know, I, I want one car is definitely hard enough to focus on and make fast, but just having that second car with that second motor option and, you know, the, the old school DRK that's running in there, I love playing with it. You know, it's nice just, you know, doing Wi-Fi or hooking up with a tablet or whatever. Um, they did release a new app, of course, and it's got uh, dark mode built into it and things look pretty cool with that. Some people are kind of having a little bit of an issue with it so on and so forth but uh all in all everything looks really really good you can export all of your stuff in uh excel format and all that kind of stuff which is just great you know if you want to see your data and really examine it it's nice that all that is there now castle has already had that built in for a long time you actually the file that they save is a csv file and um it actually converts it in the castle log viewer into the graphs and everything else automatically for you behind the scenes but you can always get an actual number print out of that if you would like so speaking of the whole castle stuff a lot of people have been going through and putting their 1412 uh, motors on motorizers and kind of examine them and stuff and you know this is just kind of like a little handy tool you know they're not the best of everything as far as getting the true data out of these and what they're looking like, you know, but you can see here at a voltage of 7.5 volts, making about 46,000 RPMs. Um, the big thing was that, you know, if you look at the phases here, it's okay to have, you know, a degree or two off, but uh, these are three degrees. You know, this is the reason why you uh, send motors and stuff like that. You buy them from like Nick Bell and everything like that. So, you know, that you get an actual, um, phase alignment that is, you know, more closer together. Sometimes they'll be like all maybe one off or two, but when you have a three point spread, you know, it's debatable that gets a little bit further. Um, you know, these are, these are cheap motors, you know, we're not looking at like a $500 motor here. So you can't expect like perfect quality, but you know, you can see that there are differences between them. This is kind of more on par with like the debate from a week or two ago where, you know, it's listed as a max 77,000 uh, RPM uh, motor, but really only people are pulling around 50,000 out of it. I was only pulling about 42, 43,000 out of it. And we've been through that in the other videos. You know, I have it out of there now and I have the 2.5 Trinity back in my car just because I've got a race coming up next week. And I need to get like some real timing and stuff like that going on and collect some more data with something that I really, really am familiar with. Now we do have a few things um, on the bench that we are going to be playing around with. Got some uh, more QSA connectors because we do have another battery coming, uh, some springs. And then I did get a single bar from five star as well, which I'm pretty excited to put that onto the car uh, because that is going to help me bring my weight down even more. You know, I'm totally on this weight reduction plan right now. I have not seen it actually affect the performance of my car yet. So I'm going to try to get down a little bit lower. You know, I don't want to go down close to minimum weight. Just this is not going to happen with this kind of a buggy kit and everything because everything naturally is bigger. But I think, you know, getting it down closer to 2,500 than 2,600 uh, grams is going to be great. And this will be the final piece that will get me there um, after I throw on uh, the Voodoo Reds on the skinnier wheels. And that is it. That'll be like 2,500 grams. Now, we'll actually probably be adding a little bit more with the Racer RC body because it is cut out of a thicker Lexan. I have it and I'm working on it and stuff now. Worked with Gary, straight line spoilers right there to uh, help get my spoiler all set up. And we'll be talking about that in a video coming up soon. A lot of cool little theory and touches and stuff like that into his spoilers. So really excited and thank Gary for hooking us up with one of those to try out. And you know, you, I'm, of course I'm gonna recommend anybody that would send something to me because if somebody sends something to me, then that means they're looking out for you. Cause I'm not like a race winner, you know, I'm not like this national champion that nobody's going to remember in another year. So it, if they're sending something to me, the low, you know, 
whatever it is, then of course I'm going to recommend him. And I'm definitely going to recommend these anyway, because a, he's an awesome guy and B he's the first person that ever took the time to explain the theory about his spoilers and what he does and why he designs them a certain way. And everybody else just gives you a PayPal address and a price and that's it. So more on that to come. So I've had a few people reach out to me uh, about, I've seen Dennis actually doing this as well um, a while ago, front wheel drive drag racing. Um, you know, I it's cool, the different chassis and stuff they use, you know, drag racing is anything. Of course, it's never gonna be at the NPRC level. Um, and at least for now, who knows what will happen in the future, but uh, this is their group right here. Uh, they're really growing and I've been, sitting back and enjoying a little bit of their builds and their actual uh, YouTube channels and stuff like that. It's just more cool content to watch guys. Like I really enjoy it just because I do love these kind of bodies. You know, I'm definitely more of an import type of guy than a muscle kind of guy. So it's really cool seeing this kind of stuff. You know, the one thing is, is that most of these cars do have to run on foam tires. And as these guys are really, really pushing the speeds, like they're having a, they're having a, a huge problem because the foams are blowing on them. Like they basically need a small belted rubber tire for these cars. I mean, these things are really hauling. So, you know, thumbs up to people pushing stuff. If you guys want to see some cool, interesting content, maybe you even want to build a front wheel drive racer yourself. Um, can't be that expensive compared to some of the stuff we do. And it looks like a lot you can get away with using some of the cheaper chassis and stuff that are out there, like uh, some Tamiya stuff. Um, and then use uh, some lower, you know, it, it's a fun build, something to try. You don't need to worry about going out and buying like this world-class champion stuff and everything. So check them out, guys. I know I am. So I've been creeping around, of course, on the No Prep Junkies forum this week on Facebook, and it's been pretty quiet. Um, it's kind of a good, it's like that big catch all type of a uh, Facebook group where you get like race announcements and some product announcements and also just a lot of, uh, discussion about interesting topics and so, some arguments and fights, of course. So every time you, I see posts like this one here from uh, Zach James, you know, talking about getting in the drag because of the scale and the realism of the vehicles and stuff like that. And I think that was one of the first thing that we can all talk about that attracted ourselves into it. And there's still a significant amount of people. I know we have some locally that still want to race those kind of cars. They just want to get out and drag race and have fun with us. They don't really care about, I mean, of course they want to go straight and they want to go fast, but you know, they, People will not run at like the Corvette body or they will not run the, you know, the GTR. They just won't do it. Like they want the Nova, you know, not very many trucks, things like that. So it's cool to see that people, you know, take the time and everything. And you see some awesome paint jobs that people are doing and everything really, really cool. Makes me really go back to when they first thought about the 13, five class on how it was supposed to have like scale stuff so it was going to take like you know that scale aspect of crawlers and stuff and kind of throw that in there into the mix you know for everybody but uh yeah just some pretty cool looking cars man um you know i've never done anything like this and i'm not that good of a painter and i have proof of it out in the garage right now with my totally flat black racer rc body that I messed up on it, which is pretty unfortunate, but that is just the way that life goes. Now, one thing that you cannot deny about Facebook is that's where you see a lot of product launches. That's just the way that things go. We've got Eva, uh, who is it now? Yeah, Exotech coming out with uh, their actual tires that come with basketball valves installed. They're called the twisters, I believe, and they are ready to go and uh, for air right off the bat. And those are either released now or getting ready to come out. Um, you know, who knows what those are gonna be about. I think, I think they're already out and I've heard some people talking about some good stuff on them. So that's definitely awesome. There's also been some uh, a lot of talk. We've got the R1 batteries came out yesterday for about, I don't know if they ended up selling out yet or not. Sometimes they sell out really fast. They might've got a big batch. I actually picked one up for myself. You know, I didn't want to do it, but I have to try it. It seems like the 15,000 
um, is just a 4P, but you know, we're, last year when we were doing this whole discussion, and this is a whole nother type of video and testing that we can do, you know, I had a 4P big max amps battery versus the Trinity uh, 6400. Actually, it was a 6P max amps battery. And in my opinion, the Trinity outperformed the actual, the four at the 4P, the 6P battery. And that's why I ended up getting rid of that one and just sticking with the Trinity for the year. So it's kind of like this age old question that we're gonna be seeing coming up. And I think it really comes down to like the car, the power system and everything like that. What actually is better, more smaller cells or less bigger cells? I mean, when you're talking about four 3,900 milliamp cells together to of course wired in parallel and then series up to 2S, I mean, that's some serious Moz. And the best thing about this R1 battery, you know, if we compare it to the Phantom battery that I just got, which is a 9900 6P, you know, the Phantom battery weighs 550 grams. The R1 at 15,000 weighs 583, if I'm not mistaken. So I am literally, I'm literally increasing my Moz by like 30% at almost no weight cost at all, like 30 grams. So and I'll have to double check that and see, but I'm pretty sure I saw that it was listed at 583 grams. So we'll see how, what happens when that gets there. And we definitely will be running that battery. The weight will go up a little bit because I don't think it comes with QS8. And I'm back to running QS8 again, just because, I don't know, it just makes me feel better than XT90 does. No scientific reason other than that. I guess the biggest thing to end with here tonight, this will be kind of a short one, is really just how overall fast everybody is going now just out of the block. I was watching some of my old videos from last year when I first got the McLaren and, you know, was able to finally first start making straight hits and all that kind of stuff. You know, I was running at 3.1, 3.2, 3.3 at like 48. I remember I first broke 50 miles per hour. And then, you know, you fast forward like three or four months later, like we're into the two threes and the two twos. And then eventually at the end of the season, you know, we broke two. But the journey to get there, man, what a journey it was. So I'm really excited for this year. I'm super bummed that I tried to get out and actually get a little bit of, you know, lap time in tonight before the rain got here. But I had adult things to do like mow the grass. And luckily I got that done just in time for the rain. And now it's supposed to rain for like two or three days straight. But it looks like we're literally going to be into a like spring, late spring, early summer like drought, nice type of pattern of 70s and low 80s from like the next couple days when this rain's done all the way through like next weekend, which is awesome because I hope it holds out. So we'll be going to the Lucas County Fair Fairgrounds in Ohio at the Maumee race. Um, a lot of the local fast guys, of course, are going to be there. So we'll see what I can do, get done with the car and see how well I hold up. I could care less if I get knocked out in the first round. That just means I get to come home earlier on Saturday. But if we go up there and we do some rounds, then that is going to be awesome. There's a lot of people that like have raced there a lot. This will be my first time. That's definitely putting me in at a disadvantage. So I got to get there on Friday and definitely do as get as much testing time as I can. Try not to like make any dumb mistakes for the race program like bring every cable with me that I can and all kinds of stuff and be ready to go. Um, I know I'm probably going to be stopping by uh, Gary's pits for spoilers. You said to stop by and see him and what's going on. And, you know, I'll be there with uh, checking out my buddies and seeing Tim Barth. And, you know, this is the big part is just seeing everybody again and being out. So it'll be just fantastic guys. So I hope you guys are able to get out this weekend and have some fun and uh, let's see those times, baby. Keep getting fast on Facebook. We will see you all later. Peace.